Hello, I'm Jay from Volunteer Audio. This is the third part of a video series on how to do a full installation on a 2016 Street Glide. We started with a radio and speakers, second part was an amplifier, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install a cut kit, which is adding speaker provisions to your lids on your saddlebags, and how to install these Hertz SX690 Neo 6x9s. We're also going to go over the wiring that goes to them and how to properly install that as well. So hang out and check out the video. All right, so a lot of guys want to add 6 by 9s to the back of their Harley. They've got beautiful custom paint jobs like the one you see on this Street Glide. Uh, the better way to do this, and I think this is better even on a vivid black bike, uh, it's so easy to buy new lids that are already black. The other colors, you're going to have to take them and get them painted. But there's some, some very good benefits to doing what's called a cut kit. Now, many companies make cut kits. Not all companies make great speakers. Uh, so you'll see this exact process done from many other companies, and, and, and I'm not taking anything away from any of these companies by mentioning their name, but Rockford Fosgate makes a cut kit that uses the exact same cut kit design. Uh, Infinity makes one that uses the same design. Uh, the other options would be Aquatic AV and Boss Audio up to this point. Now we know already in transit to us are the new Soundstream cut kits. Now keep in mind, they all work the exact same way. You're going to have a template that goes on top of the lid. You're going to trace and cut out the line on the template. And then you're going to sandwich a new grill that looks like a CVO style grill to the top of the lid. There's two pieces that are going to screw together. We always, no matter what brand, we add silicone to this and we secure it down to make it more watertight. Then you still have to make sure whatever speaker you put on the bottom of that, that you seal it to the adapter. And if you do that, you'll keep a watertight bag without getting water down on your jacket, on whatever it is that you keep in your side bag. So I'm going to start the process by removing a screw on this handle to allow our template to go on, tape up the bag, and then we'll start cutting and I'll show you the process. All right, so like I told you just previously, there are plenty of cut kits on the market. The one we're using, you actually remove the screw on the back side of your handle first. It's not a bad idea to do this because as you're cutting through here, you wouldn't want the blade to hit that metal. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the screw. All right, on this particular one, it is a T20 Torx. I'm gonna leave the handle in place because I'm gonna lock the bag with the handle and then I'm gonna slide the handle out. The first thing we want to do is we want to protect this lid from any scratches while we're cutting. So you want to take some painter's tape and just tape off the top of the lid. Got it taped off, take your cut kit and lay it over and just make sure the tape is everywhere your cut kit would be. So we're going to position it on the lid. You want to just fill around and make sure it's good and firm. And then there's going to be two screws that we're going to screw in from the template into the lid. All right, so in the bag of hardware, you're going to find two uh, screws that have a self-starting tip on them. You're going to make sure you find exactly where it's at its position where it feels like it wants to stay. Press all the way down and screw it down. This is going to hold our template in place and make sure that it doesn't move while we're cutting. All right. So now I've got two different options for what we're going to use to cut this. Either way, you're going to take a drill bit and you're going to drill in one of these holes and you're going to get a starting place for your bit to go in. I've got a one-handed sawzall from Milwaukee that I think works really well and we buy a jigsaw blade for it that fits it. It's really nice to be able to scroll cut around these edges. We also have a jigsaw that does the same thing. So either one of these would work. We just wanna make sure as you go around that you make sure that none of these tools make contact with the bag or the bike. Um, at the end, there's gonna be a lot of plastic debris, little pieces that we'll vacuum up and clean up. But I think doing it on the bike is definitely the best way because this is very secure mounted right where you need to be so you've got more control over it. Trying to do this on a counter or a table or somewhere else or even on a bag stand makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, so we're going to go with a bit just large enough to, to start our cutting uh, hole and you'll see there are areas that are already dowed out that a bit will fit into. So we're going to drill through one of them. All right. So I find that I like using the one-handed sawzall better. You'll notice this is a pretty wide 
pattern or this this template. It's got this this area that you're going to cut through, and you're going to cut through these little sections into the next section. I try to stay to the inside. So even if you cut to the outside, it's still going to fit. But we find that it fits tighter and better if I stay to the inside as I'm cutting this out. So like I say, it's pretty wide. It's a lot wider than the blade that I'm using. So I'm going to stay to the inside edge and start cutting around this. So as you see, the tool is making contact with the template, so we're never hitting the paint. And the tape is keeping this from vibrating and leaving any marks on the paint. All right, so just like that, you just follow that line. If you can stay within the line, you can do this and not mess anything up. So really like the idea of these templates. Cut on the inside edge. After that, this is just gonna remove because nothing's attached to it anymore. Throw, the, throw these away, untape it, and clean up your mess. All right, so I removed the tape from the bag. There's a few little pieces of plastic here and there. We're gonna wipe it down and vacuum it again at the end. I already vacuumed out the inside of the bag. And you'll notice this cut, it's not absolutely perfect. It's pretty close, but as you make your corners, you'll see there's places that are a little rougher than others, but you have a pretty large area flange on this side and the underside that cover all of this. So after we're done, we want to go ahead and test fit our outer grill. If you put it on there and it seems like it fits well, we're ready for the next part. We're going to open the lid up and we're going to seal this and screw it in. Now, when I do it, I always put a bead of silicone, just 100% silicone that's clear around the edge where this gasket is. We're gonna do the same thing on the underside. Here's our other part. I'm gonna put a bead right where the gasket is on it as well. That way when we sandwich these together and we have these four screws that hold it together, they're not all that's holding it. Once the silicone dries, it's good to about 100 pounds per square inch in strength, but it's also making this even more watertight. So every install we do, we do it in this manner. All right, so I'm gonna get some silicone, get some screws, and we're gonna put this on. All right, so I'm gonna apply some silicone I do it in a large caulk gun because we do so many of these, but you can also buy it in small squeeze tubes. And we're not going to worry about putting a whole lot. We just need a little, just a small bead all the way around. And at the end, some of this is probably going to squeeze out as, it, as we uh, screw this together. And if it does, it's not really a big deal. Silicone, as it dries, easily rubs right off and cleans right off the paint. If you uh, Try to do it too soon though. If you try to get it off while it's wet, it kind of just smears. But again, if you'll wait for that smeared up mess to dry, it'll come right off. So go ahead and add the silicone all the way around. This doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be there. Definitely try to keep this off your clothes. I will tell you from experience, it does not wash out. All right, so I'm gonna silicone the other side as well. Now, when we send these out, they're boxed in a right and left side. And earlier I was talking about the fact that 
Right now, it's made by four companies. All four of those companies send speakers out with the cut kits. That's fixing to change. Uh, Soundstream has introduced their own cut kit and they're gonna allow us to buy it without speakers. It's gonna significantly cut the cost of our packages that include a cut kit because we're not having to buy a very expensive set and then not have the speakers used. Um, the particular company we're using here, I'm not gonna mention their name because they don't like the idea of us using our cut kit without their speakers. They make a really good speaker and we offer it on our site with the cut kit. And moving forward, we'll offer the Soundstream cut kit with the Hertz speakers as well as the Soundstream speakers. Soundstream did it because they said the six lines, people may want them without a cut kit. 98 to 13, a lot of times people have already changed the lids or maybe you have a CVO and you're you're gonna do some modifications to be able to add it. So I've got this together. Now there's one thing we haven't done yet. We need to put our screw back into our handle before we put these in and screw it in. If not, you're not gonna have access to the screw once this is mounted from underneath. So I'm gonna take and put that back in now. You can actually access that without even opening the lid at this point. All right, so that's good and tight. All right, so let's talk about our hardware. When you get your bag of screws, you're gonna have some long screws to install the speakers and some shorter screws that actually put this together. Do not put the long screws in, it'll try to come out the other side of the adapter. And this is just gonna use a Phillips screwdriver and some basic hand tools. All right, I'm gonna put the outer grill in place first. If you get a little silicone on the inside of the bag, no big deal. If you, uh, it'll easily clean up with some paper towels. And don't tighten any of these all the way up until you get them all started. Get that screw back out here in a minute. Start the other ones. Well, I've got a screw that fell in a little crevice here. All right, did a better job that time, got it in. So now that I've got them all started, I'm gonna tighten them all down. You're just going to want to go till they pull each other together. You don't want to over tighten them. This is plastic and we don't want to break that plastic. Now I'm going to take and go ahead and get the majority of the silicone off with a paper towel. And then after it dries, we'll go over it again. And so after it dries, this will rub right off very, very easily. But we don't want to leave these big bulky parts. Looks like it did very well. Looks like it fits really nice to the lid. Next step, we're gonna install our six by nine. I'm gonna go over how to add a gasket to your six by nine to make sure that this stays watertight. All right, so we're gonna put this six by nine speaker in here. This particular kit is one that we offer. It comes with the cut kit. It is not made by Hertz. 
And we also have the Hertz SX690 six by nines. These were one of the favorite six by nines by most installers and Harleys, but they, no long, they do not make yet a Hertz specific uh, cut kit. Uh, if they ever do, we'll have it in stock and we'll offer it. Right now, if you want one that is meant exactly for the speaker, you're gonna to wanna to get our Soundstream 6x9s, our new Neo 6x9 with the Soundstream cut kit, or also our Infinity Kappa Perfect Motorcycle 6x9s. They also come with the cut kit. In those cases, it's gonna come with some gasket material to put the speaker up to the cut kit and try to make it watertight. The Hertz speaker doesn't come with that because they didn't know we were gonna use it in this manner. So I go to our local hardware store and I pick up this weather stripping. It is a butyl rubber. It's self stick on one side. And instead of siliconing the speaker in, I just add this to the outside edge. Now you wanna make sure if you add any kind of gasket or sealant that you don't affect the surround of the speaker. We need this woofer to be able to move in and out. And by doing this, if we ever decide we need to unbolt the speaker for any reason, it's easily gonna be able to come out without damaging the speaker. If I were to silicone it in, I'm afraid that the silicone would be strong enough it might rip the surround on the speaker if we ever unbolted it. So I'm just gonna run around the perimeter with this until it meets up and then I'm gonna cut it to length. Very, very little water is ever gonna make it up to this high of a point. But if it does, we wanna make sure it doesn't end up in the bag. These speakers are completely waterproof. They have a gasket around the center pole piece, so any water that lands in here is not gonna travel through into your bag as well. We don't want a vented pole piece, because that means any water that went in would get to the voice coil and travel right out the bottom. So there it is with our added gasket all the way around the speaker. Next step is we just need to screw this in from the underside. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the extra silicone that got on the inside of the bag around the speaker adapter out before I put the speaker in. It's gonna be a little easier to clean it up now. The rest of it looks really good, so there's no need to touch any of the rest. Now, again, it came with four longer screws. These longer screws are meant to put your speaker in. And I want when you do this to make sure you orient the terminals of the speaker toward the back of the bag. Because when we put our harness in, you'll see it's gonna come around perfect to that point, And it's gonna follow up right where this uh, cloth support is. So we're gonna set our speaker in where we think it should go. Now, make a little bit more room right where the screws go so we don't try to cut our gasket. Make sure it's all the way down. Again, later on, I'm sure they'll come out with a cut kit that'll come with a specific gasket already with the speakers. They just haven't done that yet. Lots of new products in the work from Hertz, and as they come out, you can definitely make sure that they're gonna be on our videos. Death mint packs, you definitely need to take those out of your speakers as well. So, again, like everything else we've done before, start all your screws, but don't tighten them down all the way yet. All right, I think we're in, we're good and tight. Still has a very factory CVO look. Now I wanna talk about a few things about doing a cut kit or buying a lid. If you notice, our six is actually at an angle. It's gonna point it a little bit forward toward the driver. Um, it's also going to bring it up higher into the lid so we have more storage space in the bag. The Infinity speaker and the Soundstream speaker, they basically don't have a magnet. They're Neo, but they're recessed up and they're a lot shallower. The Hertz is one of the top speakers and it has a very large neodymium magnet on it. Even though Neo is very strong, and we don't need a large magnet, they really overbuild this speaker. So let's get our wire run. I'll show you how to drill the hole and how to get that put in next. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bag. We're gonna set it up here so you can see it. Normally it makes it easier if you've got it up on a table anyways. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill our hole and add our wire. All right. I've got a towel laid out here so we don't have to really worry about this scratching the bag. Now most time if somebody's here watching me, they freak out and they gotta clean the back of the bag while we're doing this, but we'll let him do that later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole. Let me see if I can tell you what size it is. Uh, this is my normal bit that I use for this. And it makes it hard to read the one we're doing. All right, so it's a three quarter inch hole. 
Uh, I'm going to come out right between the hole where the front screw goes in to hold the bag and between there and where you see the screws for the latch on the inside. I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to drill all the way through and put this three quarter hole in. I'm going to bring my bit out a little further so I can go through without risking hitting it with the drill. All right. So we went all the way through. Now the purpose of this large hole to run a speaker wire through is we're going to send you a set of quick disconnects. And there's going to be green ones on the left side, purple wires on the right side. They're actually labeled on the other connector that I'll show you here in a minute as belt side and brake side. So belt side is green. I'm going to pull those speakers wires through the hole and then we have a grommet and we just cut this drilled this hole to the right size for a grommet. So we're going to push it into the hole. This is going to give us a good watertight seal. And this is going to be part of any of the kits we offer with cut kits and six spinons. You're going to get this quick disconnect wiring as well. So now I'm going to take this back down, put it on the bike, and bolt it back in and show you how we connect the wiring up to the speaker. All right, so next step, I'm going to take some little self-adhesive zip tie holders and I'm going to peel the back off of them and put them where I want my wire to route over to our six spine. So I'm going to put a couple across the front. I'm going to run another one over here where I want my wire to come up to the speaker. Now we've got some weird things going on with Harleys. So sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I mean most of the time, we're going to find that the rear speaker wires are out of polarity at this point. If you didn't have any factory rear speakers, you didn't have a tour pack, uh, you didn't have a factory boom stage one that had rear speaker wires run into it or a CVO, you're going to have no rear speaker wires factory. And what we find is when we plug in our extension and then we hook up our rear quick disconnect, Harley flops the wires at times in the front connector. So they're out of polarity. So you can definitely get a polarity test tool and you can check this at the end. But 99% of the time, I go ahead and wire these up backwards, meaning the wire with the stripe, I want you to put it on the positive. The one without the stripe is going to go to the negative. It's kind of opposite of what color codes would normally tell you. But we notice that Harley does this backwards in a lot of bikes. Now, if you want to verify this, you could definitely just check it with a polarity test tool. And if you hook it up, and it sounds like there's not a lot of mid bass, you could always flop the rear speakers and then re-listen to it. I think you're going to find out you get the most mid bass with the polarity like I'm talking about right now, because when they're backwards from the front speakers, you're not going to have any mid bass. All right, so I've got this plugged in, like I say, striped to positive, solid colored to the negative. Now we're going to zip tie to these holders and work our way around to the front of the bag. Now, always when you zip tie, Take the time and flush cut the zip tie, because if not in the future, you're going to scratch yourself with it and you're not going to be happy about it. And we don't want our customers going through that, so we always flush cut all the zip ties. So we're going to get these cut. All right, so you've seen me cut and install the cut kit on this side, install the speaker and wire it in. Um, I'll be back in just a flash and we'll have the other side done and I'll show you how to reconnect it up. All right, so magically I got the other side done. <laughs> No, I got it done while you weren't here. Uh, but the other side has been cut in, speakers mounted, all the wiring is done just as we did on this side. So we now have mirror images of it.
So the next part you're gonna have that comes in our kit is a connector. It's gonna plug right into the backbone speaker harness and it's gonna have a color-coded connector that's also labeled brake side and belt side. So the, uh, the side that's brake is gonna go on this side and belt is gonna plug in on this side. That's gonna be the green wires on this side. Now you have the option, you could hide this wiring completely behind the side panel. And some people want us to do that. I really don't like the idea because when you go into service and you have a tire changed or you get brakes done or you get a strut changed out, shock, whatever, uh, they're liable not to see this connector. And the last thing I want them to do is break what we've done. So we're gonna secure the wiring under here where the seat hides it, it's gonna be beside the bag. That's the way if somebody takes the bag off, they see it and they disconnect it instead of breaking it. So we're gonna run a few zip ties to make sure this wiring stays where we want it to. Uh, let's go ahead and start over here. Just wanna secure this to other factory harnesses that are in here. of our backbone harness. I normally zip tie it and put it down here next to the battery. It is a little long. That way, depending on where you put your amp, it's always long enough. Continue to put the, the connector down here out of sight as well. Just want to make sure the seat's not sitting on top of that plug. One more zip tie. Pull both of these back and wrap it around this ECM harness. So our wiring's in place. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put our seat back on. So at this point, we're gonna let this thing dry for a while. We'll do another wipe down on the lids to make sure any excess silicone gets cleaned off. But we're ready to play it. I'll get the fairing put back on, get it wiped down, and come back with a final video. We'll let you hear what it sounds like. All right, so we've got it wrapped up. Everything is back together, fairings on. And if you've watched all three videos, you saw the installation of the new Soundstream HDH, HDHU14 radio, the SX165neo front speakers. We did the Hertz SX690 rears with a cut kit, all the wiring with our plug and play HMP4D-SS uh, amplifier. So 600 watts of power going to four speakers. These speakers are super efficient, super loud, uh, but you don't have to take my word for it. Next, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna do a walk away and I'm gonna let you see just how far you can hear this and how clear it stays. Uh, but to see that, you're gonna have to wait through the end of the video. So let me go ahead and do uh, the end here and tell you that I really appreciate you watching. I hope that this video has encouraged you to maybe take that step and do your own install, or at least show you what it should be like if you had it professionally done. So if you did get something out of this video and you liked it, please like the video, uh, share it with your friends, tell them about Volunteer Audio, and subscribe to the channel. We're gonna continue to come out with new content, new things we think you're really gonna enjoy surrounding Harley and other type of vehicles with audio. So uh, again, call us, one 844 audio Two things we love to do, talk about Jesus, 
talk about audio on Harley. So take the time and give us a call. Uh, or you can visit our website, uh, volunteeraudio.com. All of these parts are available on there. But again, if you have a hard time finding it or if you have questions, definitely just give us a call. So thank you for watching and hang out because here in a second, we're gonna have the walk away at the end of the video. All right, here's the walk away. start this it starts raining so we're gonna hurry up and get through this video get this thing back in the ground again radio's waterproof speakers waterproof amplifiers waterproof no worries about damage anything and as we walk we normally walk about a hundred yards out just to let you hear how clear it is See, it doesn't get any quieter. It just keeps on playing. So I know you thought it got a little quieter. That's the song. So let's let it catch back up. Again, that little speck is the motorcycle producing all that sound. And here we go, back to full volume. You hear the bass from here. So people are worried about mid bass. These heard speakers are pretty amazing. All right, thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.